Last year, U.S. politicians absolutely destroyed the S&P 500. These politicians were better traders than hedge funds on Wall Street. There's a brand new report out from an unusual whale on Twitter. And what he did was he broke down the financial return of a bunch of the politicians in our government. There are hundreds of millions of dollars that were exchanged on the stock market by our elected officials last year. In just equities, they bought and sold nearly $290 million throughout the year. In 2021, Congress, on average, beat the market something incredibly hard to do. This report showed which sectors that they preferred. There was big legislative events, this is a key part, such as the infrastructure bill getting passed, that were often preceded by politicians trading in the sectors affected. And there were tons of unusual trades when politicians made millions of dollars. Congress has 45 days to disclose trades to the public, but sometimes they're late, and you can see a list of the late disclosures. And some politicians also held sec securities in the sectors that they vocally expressed support for, such as senators holding cryptocurrencies while drafting crypto regulations. There's 35 politicians that were able to, across the aisle, both Republicans and Democrats, beat the S&P. Now, 35 politicians out of just over 500 may not seem that crazy, but there's way more than 500 hedge funds. And only three major hedge funds last year were able to actually beat the S&P 500. Three major hedge funds in the United States actually beat the S&P 500, but 35 U.S. politicians were able to pull off that feat. These hedge fund managers are paid millions and millions of dollars a year in fees to do everything they can to sit and dedicate their time, energy, and financial resources to study the market, to research where opportunity lies, to go long and short, and to beat that benchmark of the S&P 500. But yet politicians whose day job has nothing to do with finance, has nothing to do with investing, has nothing to do with researching securities. They were able to do it even better than the hedge funds. That's absolutely nuts. Are the politicians insider trading? What constitutes insider trading? How concerned should the everyday citizen be about the fact that their politicians are day trading or using exotic trading instruments like options and actually trading in the exact same assets that they're legislating on? We live in a society where the politicians appear to be better investors than the hedge funds. And that is very suspicious. If we then continue on this report, we've got a bunch of other graphics here. What you can see is that the estimated returns on options trading, absolutely nuts. 60%, 35%, 30%, 12%. How is it that our politicians are such experts at options trading? Maybe there'd be one or two that came from a financial background who previously were options traders. That'd be okay. But when you start seeing 35 investors being so effective at beating the market, and they just happen to be taking a bunch of options out right before big events, just begs a lot of questions. And so then if we go ahead and we look at the total value of the assets bought and sold by Congress in 2021, they're just YOLO long in stocks. Democrats, Republicans, independents, this is not a condemnation of any one political party. This is everybody. They're all doing it, and they're all just investing and trading and not spending time legislating. Our country has been in shambles. We literally had a global pandemic ravage the country. We had an economic recession followed by high levels of inflation, the highest we've seen in 40 years. And our politicians found enough time to trade so much money. The congressional trading, total amount of assets traded year over year. It's absolutely nuts. What we saw over the last two years is that almost a billion dollars of stocks were traded by Congress in the last 24 months. Options trading coming in at over $150 million worth. But ultimately, what's fascinating to me is that we had three Federal Reserve high-ranking members have to step down from their job for day trading the same assets the Fed was buying. Our politicians are buying many of the same assets. They're also advocating for various legislation and they're trading in these assets. There's a number of proposals that have been put forward that maybe our politicians shouldn't be allowed to hold individual stocks. They shouldn't be allowed to trade like this. And whether you think they're being unethical or not, whether you think this is corruption or not, and whether you think that they should do this or not, the key, in my opinion, in this situation is not what they're actually doing or how they're doing it or what their intention is. It is actually the perspective of impropriety. 
We should be able to trust our politicians. We should be able to believe that they are focused 100% of their time on representing us, on helping us improve our lives, on helping us actually achieve financial security, freedom, and happiness. But if instead they're off trading enormous amounts of money and they're financially benefiting to the tune at which they are, maybe actually what we should be allowed to ask is, what is enough? When will we actually pass legislation that will not allow these politicians to hold individual assets and trade them? We quite literally have individual employees at financial institutions, at our banks, at our hedge funds, et cetera, that have more controls on them than our politicians. Our politicians are allowed to participate in the financial markets more than an entry-level banker. It's crazy. On top of that, when you start to look at our media, politicians are allowed to participate in the financial markets more so than almost all journalists. Journalists don't even hold individual assets for the most part. And so why do we allow our politicians to do that? There's a lot of questions. I don't have the answers. But I do know that when 35 politicians are able to outperform the S&P and only three major hedge funds are, there's a lot of people left scratching their heads saying to themselves, man, maybe the reason why people want to be a politician is not because they're altruistic. It's not because they want to represent the people. Maybe it's just good for your personal balance sheet. 